it's a little reductive to talk about queer cinema to me mm -hmm. now because I think there was a very specific moment in the early 90s that people tend to take out of context. We say, oh, you know, new queer cinema, Todd Haynes, Isaac Julian. But I think what people don't really contextualize, which is important, is two things. We were in the middle of the AIDS crisis, and there was a very strong sense of urgency of this sense that if we, if our community didn't tell our stories, nobody would. And, um, and those stories would go to people's graves. I mean, it's hard to describe the intensity of that time if you haven't lived through it, because I know there's parallels we draw between this pandemic and that pandemic, but the big difference is, you know, the only thing we knew about HIV in those days was if you got it, you died. So that fueled a sense of, we're not asking for permission, we're just gonna tell our stories. We discovered pretty quickly that a queer audience was very desperate to see themselves rep represented on the screen the way any audience is. But the way most of us take it for granted, a queer audience, they never saw their relationships. They never saw their, their stories. They never saw their lives. So once we realized that, we realized that we could make a movie and target it specifically to a queer audience and not worry about anybody else. And if we made it for the right price, it would make its money back. And that was extremely empowering. When I started producing, there weren't very many women in the film business. Women were script supervisors. They were costume designers, a little bit production design maybe, but you never saw a woman cinematographer and you really never saw women in a technical capacity. And a lot of that has changed. I know we're very obsessed with visible diversity. You know, when we talk about Cannes or Venice or, or San Sebastian, any film festival, we talk a lot about the number of female directors. And of course I think that's important. And Killer's been, you know, pioneering female directors for the past 25 years. We, we probably worked with more than any other production company and way before it was, you know, in fashion. But I also wonder, like, we don't talk about the number of female producers. We don't talk about uh, how many other women are behind the camera, you know, designing, shooting, all of those other things. It's like we've really just focused on directing is the only thing that, that matters. And it matters a lot, but it's not the only thing. It's important to make the distinction that, and I talk about this a lot when I'm in Europe, but you know, we have no film subsidies in America. So when I decide that I'm going to take on a script, I have to decide that it has a path to being made. And that path is very different from a path, say, in Spain or in France or really mm -hmm. anywhere with a, a culture of, of film subsidy. Of course, I have to like the script. I have to feel like it's, like it's original, it's provocative, etc. I do have to feel like it's something I haven't seen before because I think for independent film to be marketable, that's very, very critical. But then I have to feel like it's makeable. So that means a lot of different things. It may mean I have to feel like there's a part in it that an actor, since so much of how we finance our movies does depend on cast, is there a part in it that an actor will gravitate towards? Is there something about the story that feels zeitgeisty or of the moment? Um, is the director somebody who already has you know, some kind of critical 
slash international reputation. These are all the things I have to think about when I decide, because for us it's opportunity cost. You know, if I take on a movie and we don't make it, nobody gets paid. And if nobody gets paid, we don't keep the office open. We are forced to think about our audience, which I don't think is a bad thing. And sometimes I see European movies and I say, they were not thinking about their audience. Y la productora de cine, Christine Bachon, presidenta del jurado. Thinking about your audience can make a movie better because I do believe that films are made for people to see. I don't believe that they're made for somebody to just have their own fantasy about, about what they want to do. You know, then they should go like be a modern dancer or something. So I do believe that's part of film as a commercial art form. And, sh and if you as a filmmaker don't really celebrate people seeing your work, I, I'm not sure I'm the right producer for you. Um, on the other hand, there are filmmakers whose careers would never have happened if they hadn't had the sort of, um, you know, the ability to experiment, for example, because of subsidies. Because we have much less of an ability to experiment. But it also forces, I think, in America, a kind of inventiveness on the part of filmmakers because they don't have the luxury of subsidies. So it's a two-way street. I, I have spoken to many film schools in Europe or many uh, um, you know, film programs where a filmmaker will stand up and say to me, well, I don't care what an audience thinks. I make my movies for me. And I'm like, bully for you, you know? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>